Mike here, WG5EEK, and I just wanted to show uh, a little, I guess, money-saving tip that I uh, have found useful in the past and present. So a lot of people need a power supply for the radios, uh, and they can get expensive. So this one right here is one of the cheap ones, and I'm going to tell you why it's cheap and why you should do it. So this is an HP. Uh, it's an HS. TNS-PL18 62 amp power supply. Now, if you were going on Amazon or eBay or you know anywhere else that you would buy power supplies, you might find the equivalent would be around $200 for a similar output. Uh, so this one uh, I paid $15 for, and about $10 or so in parts. You know, get a switch on there. A uh, couple poles, and the reason those are so expensive is I bought them in bulk. <laughs> I bought a lot. I bought like 20 pieces so I can make more. But uh, I kind of just drilled holes through the base here. The right side of this blade is uh, positive, and of course the left side is negative. And all you have to do is bridge two pins to get this thing to turn on once you apply power. Now. Um, on some other ones, I just I just jumpered them, but I wanted to put a switch on here since I am going to be using this as my main bench power supply. So I've got a 60 amp power supply for about 15 to 20 dollars. Uh, you can do it yourself. And just to show you that it works, here is a Motorola 30 watt radio hooked up to a watt meter WG5EEK testing one two three, and you can see we get about 30 watts. This is on 10 scale here, so three times 10 is 30. Uh, and if you want to watch the voltage, yeah, you can do another mod and bridge or remove a resistor. You can either bridge the resistor and make it uh, where you can adjust it on the potentiometer inside, or you can uh, remove it and add like a jumper wire or something. You can get it close to 13.8. It's not going to be quite uh, where you need it, but it's close enough. You know, it, this thing isn't, uh, it's not perfect. You know, I, I didn't want to spend $200. But the cool thing about that is, um, I want to show you over here, I've got my uh, kind of homebrew rack set up. I've got two Kenwood radios here. Uh, I've got them set up for a GMRS repeater. I've got another little radio here that's hooked up to All Star. And I've got another radio down here that's hooked up to All Star. So I've got one, two, three, four radios working off just one of these power supplies. And if you look here, you can see these pins are bridged. Uh, it's this last pin here, or the first pin here, whichever you want to look at it. And then you count in one, two, three, over. So the first one and the third one over, you bridge together. I know it's a little dusty in here. It's a garage. What do you expect? But, yeah, that's how you get it to turn on. And that's why I wanted to do a switch over there so I didn't have to completely disconnect it from the main power supply of the house. But uh, this one stays on all the time, so it didn't really matter to me. So, yeah, we've got four radios on here, you know, each pulling maybe... Depending on if they're idle or not, you know, the max load would be probably 7 amps or so, maybe 10 amps each. So you divide that by 60 and you've still got room left over. So I just want to share that with you. You know, this big honking thing here is 12 amp power supply. Uh, and this little thing here, yeah, it's a switching power supply. But they're pretty clean, especially for UHF, VHF, 62 amps. All right, thanks for watching again. This is Mike, WG5EEK73.